Welcome to Escape This Podcast, to the show that's a mix between tabletop role-playing and escape room puzzles. This is chapter four of uh, What Alice Found, our new You're going to remember arc. it 100% one, one day. day. I'm going to be com- confident with that name. I'm going to come right in. But I know what I called this story. Last episode was a wonderfully sort of semi-reveal of some of the uh, weird stuff that's going on. So I'm liking that it's getting a little bit stranger. So I'm excited to see what happens yeah, in this gonna episode. we're going to get confirmation soon. We've got to get confirmation soon. Every episode we have guests on to play through an escape room that Danny has created. It's imaginary. It doesn't really exist. Uh, but Danny has created it and will run some guests through it. And you can play it at home as well. All the notes are below so you can download it and play it with your friends. But this episode, we have one returning guest and two new guests. We have Alex Horn, Rose Matafeo, and Ed Gamble. Hi, Hello. everybody. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> now... Now, there, there are three of you, so it'll be hard to make sure that we don't uh, completely talk over each other as we do this introduction. But when we have people on the show, uh, we like to ask them a little bit about themselves, uh, and then we have a few questions to follow up. Now, Alex, you've been on before. You, you were on our Christmas Yeah, not show. all that long ago, in fact. Mm. Uh, how, how, are you, how have you been since then? Anything new going on in the world of Alex Horn? Oh, yeah, you know, I've been out and about. I've been uh, on holiday. <laughs> Who has? Um, <laughs> Just travelling around. Yeah, no, uh, not much. I've been looking forward to this, Bill and Danny, ever since, because I'd, we did get through it, but I think it was mainly thanks to you at the end, Bill. <laughs> we were a team, weren't we? Yes, so, we were a team, and now I won't be playing at all. You have yeah. to take the reins. No, I've been chomping ever since, chomping at the bit to get back with, not with you, Bill, but with my two best friends who are here today. <laughs> Over... I thought if we say over at the end, then we won't speak over each other. Clever. Oh, wonderful. Over. Yeah, but you can't say over in the sentence. If you say over, but in the sentence you say we don't speak over each other, then I feel like you've ended the sentence oh. early, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good point. I ah, see the problem. Mm. Interesting. But you you still, still haven't said over, Rose. We should have, have talked Have you finished talking, before. Rose? Maybe she's not over, Alex. Rose, have you finished? Yeah. <laughs> I've finished. Uh, Ed, Ed and Rose. Ed, why is she not saying over? <laughs> Thank you, Rose. Over. Oh, wonderful. Uh, Ed and Rose, uh, you... this, this was a No More Jockeys thing. This was a No More Jockeys bit. Oh, that probably right. was, wasn't it? Oh. <laughs> over. Um, uh, Ed and Rose, you've been mentioned uh, in an episode of the uh, Taskmaster podcast, at the very least, as being an escape room dynamic duo. Uh, do you think you're going to live up to that reputation today? Well, I was just I was saying to you before we started recording, I've had a really long, hard think about our escape room team that me and Rose are on. And I've come to the conclusion that I don't do a lot for the team apart <laughs> from sort of shout. And the initial five minutes, I'm good at looking in all the cupboards uh, because <laughs> I, I, I'm good at finding things. So what I'll do is I'll scan the room initially and be like, right, I'm getting in this cupboard. Let's have a look in the pockets of this coat that's hung up. Uh, let's get all the clues and put them in a central location. Uh, and then I'll be here and I'll know where all the clues are. And you guys do the puzzles and I'll sort of be more of an admin guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're, yeah. You, you line them up. You do find everything. It was really good. Um, you, you bring everything into the middle. You kind of, Then you kind of stand around like almost like a figurine with your arms kind of on, at the sides. So yeah. it's sort of, and, and sort of just pivoting side to side. Kind of looking at what other people are doing, but, but yeah, checking on other distant. people, checking on other people, checking on where <laughs> you're a real dad in an escape room. I think there's a real dad <laughs> energy to it. Right. right, okay, cool. This is here's the map. Here's the thing. Okay, we're, we're so I think that's a really um, I think it's a great energy to have in an escape room. Um, but then you are also the person I think that the really you know you have always the escape room spiel at the beginning from the person running the escape room and. There's always, always, every time they make the point to go, okay, so now everything with a blue sticker on it in the room is something that is meant to be there. You not do, do not prize it, do not force it off the wall, okay? I think that that's for you because yeah. you, you will, if it doesn't have like some sort of thing being like, do not, this is not a clue, you will destroy it or like, yeah. you know, break it apart, which is, yeah, I mean, it's a it's There a could real, be a clue. Like I'll exactly. yeah I'll take a take a plug off the wall no yeah. problem yeah or I'll, I'll break like, a lamp <laughs> yeah you'll, you'll do it those things so I feel like we've covered the answer to the first question 
Yes, our first question is usually what's your escape room experience, but I think we've 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 mostly covered that. But it's interesting because we never we haven't we haven't done an escape room ever with Alex, you know, and I and I'm interested to see what that kind of does to this dynamic. But um, mm, will I've it done help one or with will it our agent Ed James Taylor and also Richard Allen Turner. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, it was one of the weirdest hours, but we got out and uh, they were very competitive. Oh, and I've done wow. lots with my children where I am the dad figure and mm. get very cross and don't let them do anything. <laughs> did they Did they do, as because they're both agents, did they sort of engage in the escape room thing or did they just try and sort of like hardline negotiate their way out? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was quite a leveller. They were quite um, reduced to, you know, they weren't in control. It was good. Oh, that's there was also a very glamorous lady and I don't know who she was linked with. Like a sort of Russian lady. <laughs> It was just a secret glamorous lady. Yeah, I think she was with Richard. She was part of the room. Yeah, she was yeah. part of it. That's a classic escape room. So that's your escape room experience. Now, the other aspect of this show is that it's sort of escape rooms in a kind of tabletop role-playing D&D style. So uh, why don't we start with, with Rose, arbitrarily. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any tabletop role-playing experience at all? I know. Well, so I had... Ma well, I have massive nerds for brothers. So... Um, sure. I grew up around a lot of that stuff that I don't think they were hardcore into D and D, but my brothers have gotten to it recently. I remember like fabled lands, mm. like, you know, those book kind of things. Where, yes. Yeah. My brother would kind of make me role play a bit. <laughs> with those. <laughs> I didn't know what the heck I was doing, but I, I had to kind of walk around the garden doing stuff. Um, um, but <laughs> I did dabble into D and D for some live shows that I did in New Zealand oh. once. Uh, which oh, was ri ri uh, River Deep Mountain? Was it no River Deep? No Mount Mountain Deep. No, oh, Paul will kill me. But it's Paul Williams. Uh, <laughs> he 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 uh, oh. does a podcast, d a D and D podcast, and I played Gashia Sarandon, who was a daughter of the um, Duffer Brothers. So my backstory was that the Duffer Brothers, who made the Stranger Things um, show, went back <laughs> in time and had all of these wives, and then all of these daughters, and um. They were time travellers. Gotcha. And so I was yeah. Gashia Sarandon, who was one of their daughters. Uh, <laughs> half, I think half elf druid. Um, yeah. Ooh. So, but then I now, didn't really. <laughs> which, which of the duffers is an elf? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's, you know, we never got to the bottom of that. Um, That's one hell of a premise. It was, it was good. It was a good backstory, but I never continued oh. in it. But, um, but no, I have, I have an understanding of, of, of the mechanics of a tabletop uh, uh Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Luckily, all of those mechanics are pretty much thrown out the window. Great. You just got to have the yeah. role play. You don't have to roll dice. You don't right. have stats. And I can say no to everything if I want <laughs> That's to. Also That's also true. Perfect. Um, and Ed, what about you? Do you have tabletop role playing experience? Not really. We play a lot of board games here uh, with my fiance, who does play D and D. Actually, she is mm. in a regular D and D game, um, but I'm not allowed to join in. Uh, <laughs> But we we play a lot of board games, and when when we were all allowed to meet up, often Rose would come over, and we'd all we'd all play board games like yeah. Betrayal at House on the Hill. Love, and, it. Um, Love it. Time stories. Me and my fiance play a lot as well. Oh, I don't uh, know. That. Oh, yes, absolutely love D and D. Not really. I just did one online thing for Comic Relief where we did a charity comedians D and D for like an evening. It was like a four hour thing, and I took it very seriously, and no one else did. <laughs> Does that exist somewhere? Can I find that? Might be able to track it down. It was it was oh, really right good fun. Me, it was me it? actually. Sue Perkins took it very seriously. Nish Kumar did not take it seriously <gasps> at all. Uh, his his character was a was a, I think a dwarf who just kept smoking weed anytime he was asked to do anything. He was just like, I light up a big bifter. You get that. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> Um, and Alex, I, I know we talked about this last time. Have mm. you have you been s so excited by uh, virtual escape rooms that you've done nothing but play role playing games and escape rooms since then? Yeah, I was a bit nervous because I hadn't done any D and D before the last podcast, but I've done nothing but since I did a deep dive into D and D, and uh, I love that's what I love the D and D stands for. I don't know what it stands for. No, and I've not. No, I've not done it. But Deeps it, it wasn't a problem last time. I still don't really know what no. it is. No, look, really, you don't need to. It's just the 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 feeling of being able to take on a character and and mm. interact with a with a non-existent space. And you yeah. all have done that's all fine. If you played a game before, you've done it on on our show, so we're all winners. I was very impressed <laughs> last time. Pretty much anything I asked Fran, she had an answer for. 
she did create this world, which um, which I'm yeah excited to get back into. Please now. No wonderful. And I'm assuming by Fran you mean Danny. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry, so- Fran. <laughs> Who's Fran? I don't know. <laughs> sorry, I don't even. Do I, wanna, I don't think I know so, any oh, Frans. Fran. Fran was that Russian woman in the escape room. <laughs> sorry, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wonderful. Yeah. Well, if you're ready, Fran, uh, we can get right into it. Uh, Horrible name, and... isn't it? Fran. <laughs> and, uh, and, oh, and, and start the game. Are you, uh, shall, shall we? Oh, is everybody ready? <laughs> yeah. Second. Ready. Mm-mm. <laughs> All right. You were hoping this drive would calm you down, but it isn't working. Your nerves are electrified. Every movement on the street shoots a wave of heightened alertness through you. You've run away from home, from dinner with your family, the night before your wedding, and it's all because Blake was lying to you and then made a mysterious call to someone. Who were they talking to? Why was that their first instinct when they saw you leaving? Is someone going to appear out of nowhere and try to stop you and grab you and take you home? No. That's ridiculous. You shake your head. You've never been the sort of person to fall into paranoia, which... Well, you desperately hope that this is. Just because Blake was being weird doesn't mean you're being watched or followed or... uh, whatever. All the same, when you drive past a familiar shopping strip and see the sign for Long Continental Electronics, you find yourself turning on your indicator and pulling into the car park. The hidden camera you found, it must have come from there. They're the only company in town that would sell something like it. And they're open late. As you enter the front doors, the kid working the cash register starts speaking before he's even turned around. Welcome to Long Con... He freezes when he sees you. Something wrong? You ask. Uh, no, no, of course not. I just didn't think you'd... Um, I, I didn't think anyone would be here. Uh, not many customers at this time. It's true. Apart from you, the store is deserted. Blake is the tech-savvy one in your relationship, so you don't come here often and can't say if this level of emptiness is normal. You take a moment to look around. You've entered through double swinging doors in the south wall, which are surrounded on either side by huge sales posters. The desk with the cash register is just a few steps from the doors in the middle of the room. And right beside it is a table displaying various computer accessories. In the southwest corner is a display of drones, and along the west wall behind it are several mounted phones and tablets. All super modern. The northwest corner, however, is the retro space. There is a big box with a catalogue of DVDs in the corner, which don't look like they've been touched in years. And right beside it is a catalogue of CDs. Yep, CDs. And believe it or not, they look a little bit more used. And maybe that's because right near them, there is a table with plugged in headphones and a sign Mm. saying, listen for free before you buy. Over in the northeast corner are the TVs for sale, all mounted on the walls, except one, which must be a special demo model sitting on the floor. What? No, no, I'm sorry. Fine. You're laughing at me for some reason. When we did the playtest, I think you called it a floor model. Well, yeah. And I was like, you can't call it a floor model just because it's on the floor. They're all floor models. <laughs> and I see in your notes, it's now a demo model. I didn't change that. It's been called a demo this entire time. Sure. Anyway. And in the southeast corner are white goods. You know, washing machines, dishwashers and the like. The Long Continental brand sells pretty much anything with a power source or a gear. So it's not a surprise to see all this mishmash together. Yet, you don't see any video cameras like the teeny tiny one you found in your bedroom. You look at the sales assistant. Uh, Hey, and you read his name badge, Colin, can you help me out? I'm looking for recording devices, really tiny ones, pinhole cameras like, like someone going undercover might wear. And Colin looks completely freaked out. There's a bead of sweat on his temple and everything. Um, I, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure we don't have those. Nothing like them. Uh, in, in fact, I, I don't even think that technology really exists. It's, it's a Hollywood myth. Uh, look, I have to go on break, uh, get myself a Jim Gortons. Uh, but you stay here. It's fine. I totally trust you. You can browse around or whatever. Not that you should go around touching everything, but... Uh, uh... uh and he sprints past you out the doors. Hmm. He doesn't lock you in, though, so that's something. 
but it was the weirdest thing you've ever seen, and considering the day you've had, that's saying a lot. And, look, you're not an idiot. Collins, like, obviously lying, and not particularly good at it. You just aren't 100% sure why he's lying. But you suppose, at the very least, that may mean they do have these spy cameras lurking around here somewhere. And maybe finding them will give you some answers. Oh, I, I drew Colin in and then I had to scribble him out when he left. Yeah, me too. I crossed <laughs> yeah. him out. I just wrote Colin nervous. Did Colin say he wanted a drink or something? What did he say he had to go and get? Oh, yes. He was going to get a Jim Gordon's, which is this what? universe's Tim Hortons. What? What is either of those things? Uh, coffee. Horton, Canadian you know coffee. Horton's and is? Tim Hortons is a is a terrible uh, coffee shop and donut chain that Rose actually we were talking about yesterday because Rose made me and Nish go there in Montreal even though Montreal is one of the best food cities in the world and we had to go now, and sit in Tim Hortons and drink terrible coffee. I I got to say hey, yes. I don't know the coffee but I adored it there when we were in yeah, Canada. Tim Hortons Not the, the least because they sell fake meat burgers True. which is awesome when you're traveling as a vegetarian. Tim Hortons, Ugh, man, I don't want to go on about it. And I honestly sound like a, a, like a, a, I'm paid by Tim Hortons. I'm not. And I'm actively seeking out a partnership with Tim Hortons because the amount <laughs> I talk about them in public and to friends and get on a, on a grassroots level trying to get the word out. But I just love their coffee and cream, man. It's, I mean, it, mm. I don't know. I, yeah. I love them. Um, so he's off <laughs> should, we have a, should we have a look at the posters? Well, I want to follow <laughs> Colin out to Jim Gordon's and go and get a fake meat burger. <laughs> And drag Colin back. <laughs> drag him back. He's where's where he's is, is is Colin gone? Colin's just gone, isn't he? Colin is gone, yeah. and you actually frown a bit. You aren't a hundred percent sure. There's like there's eighty Jim Gordons is in town, obviously, but uh -huh. you can't say for sure which one he must have been heading well, to. Well, look, split into three. Send me out. I'll go and find him. <laughs> oh, oh, so oh, sorry. Oh. One person, three brains. Uh, Ed said that he wants to look at the posters. I don't even know where the posters are, like in the room. Yeah, let's go. They're around them. the doors, right? They're around okay. the doors. Exactly. Hmm. So surrounding the doors, there are four big sales posters, each one with a different sale advertised. So if you go from the left, there's a big one that says Sky Brand, 50% off. And then the second poster says, buy one, get one free if purchasing for your car. Whoa. It's a big if. <laughs> uh, then the third poster says waterproofing get five free with any order and then finally pet sounds albums five dollars each oh great album but is it just pet sounds or pet sounds do you know what i mean is it pet sound it's a pet sounds i have a pet sounds a i have italicized it, it in my notes but you raise an interesting question Right, so that's, I mean, that's not going to help us for now, but at least we've had an explore. I think yeah, it's going to We've had a nice time, haven't we? A lot. You can take a break. I think there's more, me thinks there's more than meets the eye with these posters, lads. <laughs> <laughs> Should we look at the desk with the cash register? I agree. Yeah. Let's, let's go and have a little idea. investigate. Mm -hmm. I'm down with that. Wonderful. All right. You know what? I am, I'm happy to look at the cash, the cash desk, but I'm going to keep bubbling away these posters in my head. <laughs> Uh, okay. So don't worry about me. I'm All counting right. the letters in them. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the cash register area consists of a squat rectangular counter. The register itself is not particularly interesting, although it does have a message on its little screen that says, scan or insert special item code. Ta -da! That's probably normal. Now, the register isn't the only thing on the counter. Bolted to the e three bits of the edge of this rectangular counter are surveillance cameras. But they're normal-sized ones, not the creepy spyware that you're looking for. As you walk around, they swivel slightly on their axes. There are also shelves built into the counter's underside, and they too are mostly bare, except for a handwritten note at the very back of the top shelf. You reach in to grab it, and it says, Colin... Put PC accessories on display, not just the old broken ones from administration office. Doesn't look good. And underneath that, in another pen, is a response. And it says, fine, first thing tomorrow. And uh, the word fine has an exclamation mark for an I. It's a password. Uh, now you go. Guys, okay. guys my, my pen broke. I'm just going to go and get another pen. I'm so sorry. Oh, boy. This is part of it. Oh, my God. Pens oh, no. don't just break. 
I don't think pens break, do they? No, Your that's a myth. Breaks. Um, sorry, my my pen's just broken. I'm just going to go and get oh. another pen. Oh no, yeah. no, no, no! This is how it happens. <laughs> this is the glitch in the matrix. Oh, um, sorry, my my pen has just broken. I gotta quickly go and get another. This get is pen. like one of the escape room horror movies. This is not cool. This is not okay. Hi, so, Rose, <laughs> I, I like that you thought that was a password because of the exclamation mark. I would not have thought of that. I think it's a password. Fine, first thing tomorrow. But um, but, it's um, also my password, weirdly. <laughs> <laughs> for everything. Oh, all right. That's There's a tiny odd. little bit more to that description, so okay. we'll wait for Ed to yeah, be pen I'm, ready. I'm back. I'm, I believe I'm pen ready. Yes, okay. ready to go. Sorry. Lovely. Okay, so now the odd thing you notice about that note, besides the errant exclamation mark, administration office, it says. You haven't seen any door to an administration office. You haven't seen any sign of one whatsoever. Yeah. You move to put that note back. As you do, your hand grazes something on the roof of the shelf. You crouch down to look, and it's a button. A big grey button. Well, we're obviously pressing that immediately, right? <laughs> sniff, sniff it, lick it, press it. Sniff it, lick it, press <laughs> it. This is, this is interesting. I, I'm, we I'm weary of that, but, you know, go ahead. That, that, that's, that's your style. That is, this is typical Rose. I'm just going to let you know. We yeah. find a button and she doesn't want to press it. <laughs> Scared of a button. I'm we're going to lick it. We're going to sniff it. We're going to press it. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Okay. Oh. I've now got instant regret. <laughs> <laughs> you press it, lick it, headbutt it, massage it. Nothing happens. Oh, I mean, you're disappointed. You also kind of hope that you didn't accidentally just trigger a silent alarm. But one of the two. Are you happy now, boys? We should have looked at the rest of the damn room before we re pressed the damn button. No, it's fine. The button will work when we do something else. We've not triggered yeah, a silent happened, alarm. Rose. We've just got some other stuff to do, and then we can press the button, Rose. Good. It's okay, Rose. Well, I think we should go... Well, should we, should we do, go methodical and go to the computer accessories next to the desk? I think so. I think okay. so, yeah. 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 Okay. Now, uh, there is actually a computer on this accessories table as well, and it is turned on. But it appears to have no programs on it whatsoever. Absolutely nothing. And you think it's just here so that employees can show people where the various accessories have to be plugged in. So you've got your usuals. Mouses, keyboards, speakers, USBs, all the normal stuff. You do notice that all these objects are a little shabby, a little bit worn. The note under the cash register makes a bit of sense. These are easily second or third hand. On one of the keyboards, the wear and tear is so bad that some of the keys have had the ink rubbed all the way off. Do you want to tell us which ones, Danny? I would love to. So going from top downwards, uh, the four is gone. That entire key is all missing. The W. The R. The O and the P. The A and the D. Oh, no. Right. <laughs> it's going to be tricky, isn't it? A lot of, a lot of the letters from password are missing, I've noticed yeah. there. Hmm. How's the S looking? Is it looking all right? The S is looking totally fine. Mm. Do people use the four as an S? Is that what people do nowadays? Or do you I use don't the think so. Not that I'm aware. Four is an S. Sure? You sure? Oh, I don't know. Now I'm now I'm worried. Of course they do. <laughs> it's a five, isn't it? They use five as an S. Yeah. Mm. Mm, interesting. Uh, well, this half forward. Half forward. Put four. <laughs> Forward, road, pod, draw. No, dr no, yeah. I mean, right, we're not guys. Gonna... I, I hate. I hate to stick to my escape room persona, but I really think we should go and explore the rest of the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll keep. We'll keep an eye. All right, on that. Dad. Okay, Can you Dad. add a how's whip your... crack foley effect? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. How's your pen, Ed? How's your How's your new pen? The pen's doing good. It's a. Uh, it's a Lilo and Stitch Pirates of the Caribbean pen. Is the one that me I've... too. So... <laughs> there it is. <laughs> So I think we should go and do some more exploring, right? Uh, yeah, forget forget what we've seen so far. Should we pop ourselves over to the white the white goods? Sure. Yeah. You weave your way between long continental white goods. Uh, they particularly specialise in washing machines, dishwashers, and fridges. Each item has a big sticker on the front, giving it a rating for a couple of features: water saving, electricity consumption, and overall. You know, renewable energy green score. And we've actually got an image of those stickers so that you don't have to write it down. Ah. I've got you, I've got the image. 
Wonderful. Uh, would you like to describe it for our audience at home, Alex? I'd love to describe it. There are three stickers, guys, and weirdly for white goods, they're handwritten. <laughs> <laughs> there's the first one says dishwashers, and then there's three symbols on each of the stickers. There's a little blue water droplet, mm-hmm. there's a yellow lightning bolt, and then a green recycling arrow. The dishwashers gets C- minus for water, B plus for lightning, and C for recycling. That's the SIC rating. Fridges, A, C plus, and A minus. Washing machines, B plus, A minus, and B. That's the end of the stickers. Wonderful. Right. And your description gets an A plus. Ooh, thank you. Is that plus for effort? No, just for style. So I think let's put that in a cent- let's put that in a central location with the rest of the clues. <laughs> <laughs> Can we print that out and put it in a central location in each of, each of our houses? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Put it on the shelf right under the button so you don't forget about that. That's yeah. Yeah. That's the clue draw. So do we? Can we look in all of the washing machines, dishwashers, and fridges to see if there's any uh, great thinking. stuff inside? That seems like it would be an appropriate thing to do, but apparently in this store, people don't hide things in their white goods, <sighs> so you don't find anything interesting. Ah. Fair enough. My, my but first still instinct. Fun to look. My first instinct looking at that, those things, though, might be uh, uh, the, the pluses and minuses. Uh, it could be in the alphabet. It would, it, it would maybe a code. But, um, so it would be B, I mean, C, C, A, I'd, B, I'd C, go as far, B. I'd go as far to say that it's definitely a code. Oh, God damn it. If I it turns out that, just... that, that that is nothing to do with, with the escape room, I'm going to be livid. <laughs> It's just set dressing. <laughs> you know, There's like, actually only one puzzle in this room. The rest is red herrings. Did just, we not mention that? No, this is a, a red herring heavy. Uh, that actually be quite a good idea for an escape. <laughs> Everything's a red herring. Easy to design. One thing. Um, each of the each of the symbols has got an A, B, and C. So there's yeah. So so that maybe it's not useful to us right now. I don't think anything's going to be useful until we've searched the whole room. Right? Okay, okay. Well, let's go I to... I like that. I want, to, I want to go to the TVs, actually. Let's go to the cool. TVs. All right. Can we, can we run there? Is that possible? Let's run. Are you in a rush, Alex? <laughs> I just think it'd be a laugh, wouldn't it? Or, or we could do roly-polies. Let's have a little jog. You can, do, you can travel however you want. It's a mini right. Zeppelin. I'd like to sprint. Imagining, imagining Alex jogging, <laughs> lightly jogging over to another corner, which is about two i'd say three meters away you sprint dive roll your way to the tvs and looking at the ones that are all mounted on the walls they're all huge and they're shiny you can see your reflection in them they're off and you don't see any remote controls anywhere but each one does have a good old-fashioned button on the side labeled power yeah for emergencies and if you press any of the power buttons the tv does turn on but all it does is say no input so it doesn't do anything else right Okay. Can we look at the floor model? Yeah, the floor model, floor please. Model, please. <laughs> Which one? The one on the floor? Clearly more interesting. This TV on the floor is already set up, turned on, and has a channel playing. Not a TV channel. It's a different input. It's displaying the menu of a video game. You glance to the side, and sure enough, there's a console plugged in with a new remake of an old classic side-scroller playing. And, yeah, normally you'd expect the demo TV would just be, you know, showing some TV, but maybe there's some... A psychological thing that if you get someone to play a game, it makes them more engaged and likely to buy the thing. And what, what's the what's the game? Can we have more information about the game? It, it's Crash Bandicoot meets Donkey Kong. Okay. At last. <laughs> and is that, that something we can play? Can we play the game? Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, you pick up the controller, you press the A button, get things started. You haven't played the original version of this game in many years and you've never touched the remake before. Uh, The scene opens up in a jungle landscape. You see enemies over to the right called Vicious Vines, and over to the left there's the blackness of Deep Dark Cave, and then on the ground right in front of your feet is the bubbling, simmering swamp. Your character's a cute furry mammal of some kind, and it can run, jump, and burrow. You have a quick go of the first level, not too challenging, and you keep playing on and on until, inevitably, you die and are returned to the opening scene. But you have a great old time. You know you said you press the A button to start it. Are there B and C buttons as well? There is also at least a B button. Let's say a C button. I haven't seen a C button too many times on game controllers. I say you shouldn't say that there's a C button. Why? Yeah, because I think Alex is trying to link it with the posters. Yeah. 
Oh, okay, that's fair. All yeah. right. No, okay, I think fine. The there's, there's an, there's Sorry, an A yeah, and a B right, button and a joystick or two. There you go. That, that's fair. Fine. Oh, well. I'm out. <laughs> Good thinking, though. <laughs> He's done. Oh. How, how do we how do we feel about is there any more investigating we need to do here or do you want to do you want to move across perhaps to the the CDs? Yeah, let's move. The CDs they're propped up in alphabetical columns, no prices, and you aren't really sure whether they're going to be super cheap or super expensive now that they're all retro. Much like the existence of CDs themselves, the music selection is all about twenty to thirty years old. You thumb through the cases to see if anything catches your eye. It's definitely a lot of 90s nostalgia going on here. Uh, if you would like some 90s nostalgia, there's an image of just some gen- some 90s album covers for inspiration. You can see if any of them uh, make, you feel, ma- make you feel 90s things. Oh, uh, that is interesting. Right near the front, you find a piece of card about the size of a CD itself. Uh, it's got the electronic store's logo in the corner. Looks like it's a discarded staff recommendation little sign, a handwritten paragraph by a member of staff that tells customers, hey, you should totally get this one. It's super great. Five stars if you like Die Hard. This one's a little vague, though. It reads, easily the best album here. It's got all the best ones, except I can never remember the band's actual name. We at the register always just call them the camera band. Oh. Yeah, Yeah, that's useless. No wonder it was sort of just chucked in here. Hmm, interesting. The camera band. Okay. The camera band. The now, camera band. whilst we're here, mm-hmm. there was a reference to Pet Sounds on the sales posters, right? Do you think mm. we should try and find that in the... Yeah, let's give it a go. You skim through to the P section and uh, the sale must have really taken off because you don't see Pet Sounds here at all. Oh, no. Okay. Also, there's no prices. Like, that's crazy. That's a mm. weird detail. Yeah. Uh, it's, is it a front for uh, these these CDs? Should we like look inside some of these CDs and and try and see what like are they the actual? If we opened a CD, yeah. are they the actual um, CD? Yeah, let's have a as look. far as you can tell, yep. You open you okay. open up a couple of them. Uh, the what's the top left corner in that picture? Aqua. You open up the Aqua CD, and yep, it's exactly what it should be. Okay. Okay, so so that is not a full selection of the CDs. That was just some inspiration. Do we do we want to listen to a CD? Yeah, it's what what CD do you want to CD? listen to, Alex? Yeah, which which one of those defined your nineties the most? <laughs> I'd not heard of "Prolonging the Magic" by Cake. <laughs> oh, that's a good album. Is it? Satan I don't think is I my motor. Mexico. Uh, great, well, great album. Maybe we don't know what we want to listen to yet. Sheep go to heaven, goats go to hell. Brilliant song. Where do the headphones go? Into a CD player or just the wall? Ah, so yeah, this table with their headphones on it, there are four sets of headphones on here. They're all plugged into discmans that are fixed to the table, Uh. all of which are currently empty. They look old. You you appreciate that they're free to use because you can't imagine they would be worth paying for. Should we have a think about about this camera, the camera band situation? Do oh, we good point. Yeah. Have any idea about what that might be a clue to? If it's within the nineties, is there a band that we can think of that maybe used a camera on the front cover of their album in the nineties, or mm. is it a clue to their name? Well, should we, should we should we just look at the DVDs just to just to just to, mm. yeah yeah it's yeah, right next sure, door sure. right next door yeah uh, you practically have to blow a layer of dust off this display. At the front of it, there's a small sign. Top Films, it says. And then immediately underneath those words, there is a long string of numbers. Great. Let's hear those (laughs) numbers, please. What are the numbers? All right. We've got 2015, 166, 912, 1319. Okay. The DVDs themselves are stacked you know, alphabetically, so you've got a broad mix of movies. Uh, classics, kid stuff, lots of James Bonds. Each one has a sticker on it added by the store, which has a star rating for the movie. Only the star ratings are a bit confusing. Uh, every movie has a different number of stars. Some of the stars are filled in, some aren't. Look, it's a weird system. You, at this stage, do not really understand it. Can I say that I want to put that code into the cash register and search special item oh, code? Okay. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, you try typing that in. Uh, the machine cuts out well before you can type uh, all of those no. numbers. No. When you when does it cut out? More. When does it cut out, Danny? It looks like you could go as few as three and as many as six. Okay. So. And how many six. how many films are there on the top shelf of films, Danny? Now, I'm not good at estimating. A million. A number. A million films. Oh, okay. Quite a number. Hmm. So we know the special item code is we're looking for between three and six numbers. So keep an eye out for mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for any numbers like that knocking around. And so, and the star ratings of so, and and sorry, I just didn't even really listen to the star rating thing. But it's just a weird star <laughs> yeah. rating system is essentially what it is. Okay, okay, all right. So we'll come back to that. Yeah. I feel like now we just need to. Yeah, just if we're doing this, yeah. should we look at the phones and tablets and then yep. the drones, and then we can work out um, what the hell clever, we're doing? Yeah. Clever boy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then, uh, and then I, I can't. I can't stress this enough. Then. Um, my helpfulness is done. I'm I'm out <laughs> after we've looked at everything. Uh, all right, drones or phones? Phones next. The, the, pho- the phones yeah. and the tablets, please. Otherwise, we'd all have right. to go past them and come back. Yeah, it seems. So yeah, just and it's crazy. just a, quite a big jog, isn't it? All right. So mounted on the west wall, there's a modest collection of smartphones and tablets of a few different brands. Some of them well known, some you haven't heard of. There are a couple of dozen altogether. All of them appear to have close to full battery. They're all switched on but they require a password to open. Now, you notice there's something a bit peculiar about these password screens. Nothing major. It's just normally for nowadays smart devices, you just have the password being a four to six digit code. You press little number circles to input them. Not so for these ones. These ones are giving you a space for a username, a full keyboard to choose from, and no character limit. They've been very much customized as if they've already been used. Uh, fortunately, at least the username is already filled in. Uh, it's admin. And mm. that strikes you as, you know, especially for an electronic store, not particularly good security. If they just make their username admin, what are they going to make their passwords? Ah, right. So do we want to do this fine, fine first thing tomorrow business? The what? You know, it said fine on the admin office thing earlier on. I can't remember where, but I've written down admin office, <laughs> password, fine first thing tomorrow. Ah, because of something yes, Rose said. Yeah, um, but Colin's also, response. Oh, and also, I think though your your good shout with the um, keyboard thing with password with fours being the S's was a good shout, Alex. Like that could. Be yeah, I do. Alex. I do think it's a good shout, especially that seems like a clue. If their username is admin, then what's their yeah. password going to be? I feel like we should <laughs> try password or try password with uh, with two fours. Yeah. Yeah. Can we can All we right. try can we try password with fours instead of S's? You try password with fours instead of S's. It doesn't work. It says that it's the incorrect password, but oh boy, do you feel like you are onto something because, oh, you're close. Well, just password then. Just password doesn't work. And you feel slightly less confident in yourself with that one. Mm, okay. What about password with a four, two fours instead of the S and the four at the end? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. A little fine. cooler. It was, it, you were pointing out earlier, it is a bit weird to try and use a four to replace an S because mm. it kind of yeah. doesn't look anything like an S. So the four looks like an A normally. Does mm. it? Yeah. But we've got the A normally. on the... And, and the S and the S is, there's nothing yeah. wrong with the S. So. Yeah. Basically, we are looking at those letters that are rubbed off on the computer keyboard being the, being the password. So maybe just mm. four look like an H? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a is there a limit on how many times we can try the password before we get locked out? Nah. Okay, good. Nah, you're good. Nah, a million. Is it worth capitalising the P? But it doesn't feel nah. we can try it, but it doesn't feel like um nah, stupid, anything's stupid pointed idea. us towards that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really gentle way of putting that, Ed. That was really sweet. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of kind of ridiculous. I, I don't. Oh. I mean, do you want to try it with fi- Do you want to try it with fives and then just see? So password with fives instead of S's. It's well, I think that's as stupid an idea as my idea. Actually. Well, that, see, I did it much gentler than that. <laughs> yeah, he learned from oh, good. Um, learned from But no, with fives doesn't work, and you go back to double check, no, everything that's on that five key is still there. Like, there's nothing that's been rubbed off that. I will say, when you go back and have a look at that keyboard to see what letters and numbers have been rubbed off, there are two fours on a keyboard. If you know, there's the numpad off to the side, oh, and there's also the, the oh, fours yeah, in that true. top row. 
The numpad one is still there. It's only that top row four that's. Oh, that's it's a dollar away. sign. Dollar. It's a dollar. dollar. Oh, okay. Oh my yeah. god, we're thick. We're dumb. We're yeah, we really are dumb. so stupid. Yeah, we're really stupid. <laughs> Jesus. So Jesus. yeah, password with with dollars instead of s's, please. Oh my god. You press in that password, and yeah, oh my god, what an awful password. And the device that you're looking at suddenly blasts you with a background image of the cutest Cavalier King Charles Spaniel you've ever seen. Oh, it's so nice. Fills you with all sorts of happy feelings. Uh, as far as apps or messages or anything go, though, uh, no, this phone has absolutely nothing on it. Whoever's used it before, change the password and the background and apparently nothing else. Uh, you try the same password on a different one of the phones. Also works. And exactly the same again, except this time, the background that you see, it's a fancy Ferrari at the beach. It's red paint sparkling just as much as the water. Uh, in fact, you try another one, same again, uh, only this time it's a picture of a stormy sky over a rolling river. You try all of the devices and all you see is some variety of cute, pretty or cool backgrounds, but nothing actually usable on the phones. They match with the posters. You got the sky brand and the car and the pet sounds. Oh, oh Alex. Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, no. Great. No, that's good. Really good. Wow. Yeah, so, wow. We, so we've got wow. sky. Yeah, the sky car. Yeah, pet sounds. So do we Don't rearrange? Water and waterproofing, the rolling river, I guess. So can we look at the rest of the phones? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, if you're looking for those sorts of pictures in particular... You go through, you unlock everything, you find eight devices have the sky as an important feature of their background. Eight of them. How many would the Ferrari? Nine of them have cars of some sort. Okay, nine cars, yep. Sorry, yep. And how many yep. do have the um, rolling river on the stormy, in the stormy sky? Water, uh, also nine of them. Nine. And then how many would the King Charles Spaniel? You'd think it would be a little bit more. It's only three. You'd, you'd have expected more pets than cars, but apparently not. So it's something to do with the posters and the configuration of which ones so we turn off and leave on. So with Sky, so Skybrand 50% off, I wonder whether we should turn Ooh. off four, four of, them. of them. So it turns into a four. These phones, they're in a fixed on position. The, something about the mounts means you can't change the power buttons mm. on them. So this, this this will be for the cash register, right? Yeah, I think so. So change the eight to a four. Yeah, eight or so. So the first post is a four. Then the next number is a nine. But then buy one get one free if purchasing for your car. So do we want to change it to eighteen? Then waterproof and get five free with each purchase. So nine plus five, fourteen. Uh huh. And then three times five is fifteen for pet sounds. Maybe. Uh, yeah, which would be four but one that, eight one four one five. It seems a bit long for the. Yes, but I think it's three oh. to three to six numbers. Yeah, what, did you just get seven numbers? Yeah, we got seven numbers. Oh, how frustrating! Yeah, that said, they feel like good numbers that you just got there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we just feel it, it feels right. But they feel like good numbers. They are good numbers. The the hard maths of this room, you just totally successfully did. <laughs> So we've got a code, but we don't know what it's for at the moment. Yes. But are we agreeing the code four. is 4181415? Four, 1415. One, four, one, okay. Yeah. Yep. Should we look at the drones? Let's look at the drones. Let's look at the drones. please. Good old drones. Look, you're a little bit surprised to see such a prominent display of drones because your town has some of the strictest airspace laws in the country. You don't even remember the last time you saw a plane fly overhead. But you know that drones come with cameras, so maybe they could have some hint to the spyware that you're looking for. You examine the boxes and then the one out of the box drone that's sitting here. It's a DJI brand, which is real, and you hear it's a good one. Uh, it looks like you can either connect a drone to a standard remote controller that you can buy with it for a ridiculous extra fee, or to your own Bluetooth capable device. Everything seems to have fully charged batteries, however, these drones do have inbuilt password technology, which they won't switch on without. The passwords are not numbers or letters either. They're the kind where you have a three by three grid of circles and you have to swipe a line between the correct circles to unlock. How long does the um, sort of configuration of the dr like the drone password, the three by three have to be? Is it like, four, like how many, yeah, squares? 
You aren't sure. It looks like if you wanted to, you could go through all nine of the circles, but it doesn't look like that's a requirement either. So you're not sure. Okay. That's cool. (laughs) 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 I'm trying to work out how You're now at everyone's favorite point in an escape room. Being stuck. Yeah. Well, uh, you've you've got everything. See. But um, Yeah, have we found I mean I guess we've yeah, we've looked at everything, haven't we? So it's not like there's gonna be anything hiding. I was trying to see how if it was if we numbered each mm. row A B C and then across the top as well, whether that would help us in any way. It doesn't feel like it does. <laughs> and that long number before, the two oh one five one six six, that's got a zero in, which is isn't in that numbered you know, if you had the mm. three rows of circles. Yeah. But we haven't used that yet, have we? No, no, we've not okay. used that yet. No. Yeah, the zero is annoying. Zero's so maybe it's annoying. a 20 and then a 15. 2015. So let's collate the fact that we... Okay, so we've got a code Press the button from... again? Yeah, let's press the <laughs> <laughs> So we've got a... So so in short, we've got a directional thing in the uh, for the drones... We've already cracked the uh, phone tablet's passwords and then somehow yeah. got to the password, which is 418, 14, 15, which is seven. Um, yeah. Then let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14, 14 characters or numbers in the DVD catalog uh, thing. On the top films poster. On the top yeah. films. The, yeah, the, the sign that said top films and then that Are string you- of numbers, yeah. I think I found something. Uh huh. But I, but I'm not going to tell you. No. What you're working together? Ever, oh, I I <laughs> like Alex? this. I want to see where this is going. <laughs> just, Thank you, pardon. Uh, Alex, just just write what you think in an envelope and seal yeah. it now, and then you can reveal it later on. <laughs> well, look, you're going to like me. What I've discovered is, and I'm pretty I'm pretty pleased with myself. If you get the letters of the alphabet from that number, twenty would be T, then fifteen is O, and sixteen is P. So that spells top, and then six is F. 9 is I, 12 is L, 13 is M, and 19 is S. So that spells top films. So it's not very useful, Ah. but it it does show that's what that is. Great. Oh, okay. So So is that that something that's used? In the sales poster thing? A, B, C, D, D. What's 18 in the alphabet? Oh, yeah, the 4, 18, 14, 15. Yeah. R, R. D R and then <laughs> N O N D R N O. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe not helpful. Doctor Doctor No. Doctor No. Oh, ah, Doctor oh. No. The, the DVD. The James Bond. James Bond. James Bond, of course. <laughs> oh my God. See, that, th- this is, this would be when I was running over victoriously as if I helped in that at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this is classic me. Is like trying. Is like figuring out something and then just not knowing the final final. Thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's classic Drano, me. Drano. 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 So let's go. Drano, Drano. Let's go and this get was the uncle Og. Oh moment. my God! How embarrassing. This, this is this was this was Rose's uncle Og moment. Moment that Alex and I had yeah. last Aww. time we needed to unclog something. Unclog. Yelled to unclog? <laughs> that can't be anything. Oh, no. I'm horrible. an idiot. Okay, let's open Dr. No in the James Bond DVD catalog. DVDs, please. Yes. All right, you flick through the DVDs until you find it. A single copy of Dr. No. The star rating sticker covers up Sean Connery's nose. You open up the case, and unlike at a lot of these sorts of stores, it does have a DVD inside. Except it's not the right DVD, it's Goldfinger instead. I mean, that's an easy enough mistake to make. Let's, can, can we go to the golf, Goldfinger case? Yeah, cool. So you keep that uh, Dr. No One aside and you also look for Goldfinger because uh, be a good Samaritan, swap them back. You find the case for Goldfinger and what the hell? This one has For Your Eyes Only in it. That's not even Sean Connery. Well, let's get that one out. Sure. All right. You put Goldfinger aside and for your eyes only, uh, you have a scan for that. And oh my God, this one's even worse. This one, it has a copy of the kids movie Thumbelina in it. This is okay. Whatever. You go, you look for the case for Thumbelina and oh, inside this one, there's no DVD at all. Uh, You do find a shard of broken plastic, which I'm going to hand over to Bill. I get this and you don't. Ooh, it's part of a it's part of our meta puzzle. We found one of these in every room so far. Uh. If you look on the back, they've got like stuff drawn on them. 
Oh. And, and I think it's going to be a puzzle later on, but for now it's useless. Yeah, for, for now oh it's just a gosh. sign that you're getting on with the room, but you don't need to do anything with that. So, this all one right. looks like a fish. <laughs> Great. Um, you fix like you fix up the DVDs you can, but you keep the you keep the four of these aside. Mm. Uh, can we look at the star ratings on the front of them? You can. Oh, yes, you can. And you've got a picture. Oh, there we go. Ed, if you would like to describe those star ratings to our audience at home, and if you're listening at home, you can see all these images and as well. Let They're it be linked. known, I drew everything on here, not just the stars. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. So uh, the Doctor No case has two stars, but only the second one is filled in. Uh, the Goldfinger case has one big star, uh, and I'd say the first third of it, if you look from left to right, the first third of it isn't filled in, and then the rest is. Uh, For Your Eyes Only has four stars and only the last one on the right is filled in and Thumbelina has one big star and the first half is filled in. Wow. Mm. So what haven't we... um... Well, we've not done anything with the code thing with the circles. Oh, yeah. We've still not solved the camera band either. No, No, good point. So I wonder whether if the CDs are worth another look at maybe there's something missing in terms of how to interpret these stars because at first like what's interesting i find is is one of them is like well one of the 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 gold finger one is like is kind of three quarter filled from the right but then thumbelina is half filled from the left from the left yeah Uh, you know what the doctor no looks like it's just the word no we need and maybe for your eyes only it's just the word only do you see what i mean Yes. if it's ah thumb yeah, <laughs> um, um, finger and finger and thumb. No, yeah. it's g- can we call that finger. the episode? Can ah, this episode thumb. just be called Ah Thumb? Because I love that. Ah Thumb. So no, no finger, finger, only thumb. Only thumb. No only finger. Thumb. No finger, only, only thumb. thumb. Right. So is that is that that maybe uh, to do with entering a code later on or something? Yeah, maybe or with the um, code? maybe the swiping on the on the drones. No, the button. Yeah. Oh, the oh. Ooh, what about if we try and press, press the, the button, button with, with our thumb? thumb. Oh. Ed, it you've seems gone up in my estimation like it, so much. <laughs> it seems like it could work, but uh, you realize the button probably doesn't know that you're using your oh. thumb. It's a button. Try, try it anyway. You oh, press yeah. it with your thumb. Oh, you, yeah, I'm not saying you don't try. You try. Always try. But Nothing changes. You realize you may have overestimated the intelligence of the button. <laughs> no finger. But I think no finger, only thumb was a great solve, though. So yeah. I think we've got that. Yeah. I think we yeah. can lock that in in terms of. Uh, in terms of the, the DVDs and we can go and explore some other stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think last time you said to me, you should always look at the door, the back of the door. Mm. Have we done we that yet? haven't looked at the door. No. No. That's very true. Is there anything on the back of the door? There certainly is. Uh, the door's like the walls around them, plastered with text. Here you can read these stores' days and hours of operation, although just barely, because the glass on these doors is filthy. Yuck. Gross. Can we give it a wipe? Yeah. You give it a slight <laughs> wipe God. and it, it's it's pretty caked on there. And would one of you like to, to have a look at this dirty door that you've just found? Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, well, well, well. The filthy door. <laughs> Opening Yuck. hours. So um, it's got Monday to Monday to Sunday on down the left um, and the hours, but then certain bits are smudged out with, with, with sort of soot or just dirt monday is um uh obscured but 6 a.m to 9 p.m which is the monday hours 6 a.m is not 9 p.m is obscured tuesday uh the t of the tuesday the the t-u-e is has got muck on it um 6 a.m is clear there's a little uh and then to 8 p.m Basically, I'll read out the hours. Oh my god, I'm so bad at this. Wednesday, seven a.m. to ten p.m. Seven a.m. is obscured a bit. Thursday, seven a.m. to nine p.m. Thursday and seven a.m. a little bit. Friday, six a.m. to eight p.m. Um, p.m. is kind of uh, covered. Saturday, doesn't, I don't know if this is pertinent to anything, but I'm gonna really explain it. Saturday, eight a.m. to eleven p.m. Saturday is obscured, <laughs> and the m is as well. Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And the U and Sunday is obscured as well as the M a little bit. At the bottom it says, Welcome to LC with some psychotic um, smiley faces on each of the corners. Um, <laughs> which This is a janky, janky old sign. 
Um, so we've got numbers to deal with. Oh. It doesn't feel like any of those hours are out of place, right? Mm. They all they seem fairly standard. Mm. And what do, do, do they look like? Fingerprints, like the whole hand, sort of smearing them. Bit. Like it's pretty deliberate stuff, isn't it? It's deliberate stuff, mm. and it's all like five. F- f- most of them is five finger smears. It honestly looks like someone's trying to escape this terrible, terrible <laughs> storm. Um, but then the ones on um, a bit lower aren't, are they? So is that just mm. an artistic decision? Or are you, uh, or, I mean, I think, um, who knows? Nothing is art. Everything's puzzles. Oh my gosh. Opening hours <laughs> at the top, the zero, the, the oh, sorry, the zero. <laughs> I think opening is spelt with a zero at the start. That's how <laughs> that's how indoctrinated into the escape room culture I've become. Um, uh, oh, okay, what can we do with these hours? Fing- oh, no finger, only thumb. <laughs> oh yeah, so, 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 let's look at so the maybe thumb the thumb Good, ones. Yeah, oh, okay. So it's great. like it's like P T on a P T seven H. Now there is a bit of sort of a separating dividey sort of line between the days of the week on the left and the hours on the right, isn't there? Ah, uh, mm. okay. So uh, yeah, so if it's T H um U? Is it, is U? it no, no, that's Yeah, U, yeah, Where's that's the, the thumb, right? Yeah, U. T H U, right? Ah, and then, so Thursday. Uh, and then it's P seven um M, M. seven PM. <laughs> So that's the Thursday 7 p.m. Maybe is the time Ooh, we, yeah, we need, good. like, someone needs to meet, like, I don't know, that you're supposed to show yeah. us at the store? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> All right, that's curious. Thursday 7 p.m. Curious. feels good. Especially the way yeah. Danny's saying that's that's curious. That feels like we've got yeah. that. Okay, okay. Oh, there just, another, what a another... well designed poster that was. <laughs> what a well what designed puzzle you've <laughs> That's a really good, really Where, good When Bill puzzle. playtested it, he looked at this picture and went, oh my God, it's covered in demon hands. <laughs> <laughs> they are demon hands. They're little demon hands. That's really cool. That's a really cool puzzle, I've got to say. Um, uh, okay, well, you did say that there was possibly one other thing that we haven't, haven't found. So may as, well, may as well try and find that, right? So there are three cameras on the desk. That's the one. Mm. Oh, right. Okay. So, yeah. So, can we look at the... I mean, if we look at the cameras... Mm. Uh, and they, yeah. They swivel, they swivel around, don't they? When we... They... Look, they try to swivel around. Like, you do a quick little wander around the cash register in front of these cameras and you watch them to see how they respond. They're trying to move with you, but they are all in various stages of crap. Uh, like, the leftmost one, it doesn't move. It just flashes a little green light three times and then uh. nothing else uh just yeah three flashes and then it dies uh the middle camera it does move but again not very much the second camera it can only face towards the doors it can follow you the tiniest bit left and right but it's basically just at the doors and uh the third camera it can follow you and look down like it can tilt itself down but then it really struggles to move in any uh, other three direction, doors down. so it can't move itself back. Three up Doors Down was in the uh, 90s music. So can we look at that CD? Hang the on, uh, explain that to me again. Uh, yeah, so it's a band from the cameras. Yeah, The cameras are new to me because my pen ran out at that point. <laughs> oh, that's true, that did. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Three flashing lights, and then the second one's to the doors, and then the, and then the right. third one can only go down, and the Three Doors Down was one of the... CDs. Right. Amazing. Okay. So let's go hmm. to that Three Doors Down CD. The camera band. All right. Uh, you go back to the CDs. Sure enough, there is an album by Three Doors Down. Uh, it's all real, all factual information. It's called Away From The Sun. It's the second studio album and it contains such singles as When I'm Gone, The Road I'm On and the smash hit Here Without You. And there are four copies of the album here. Should we stick them all in? Yeah, the let's put them all in, all in the CD players, please. All right, uh, you put them all in there and uh, you start with the first one, you put the headphones on, have a listen. The first song on the album, When I'm Gone, starts playing, but oh boy, 
the wear and tear on these headphones, it is a nightmare. The sound is so scratchy, it hurts your ears. Static overloads the song almost entirely. You only get through the first couple of words. There's another world. I haven't listened to the song. I don't know the tune. <laughs> you could just There's say the another words. Please world. don't sing them. Before the whole thing just dissolves into noise. I should have listened to the song. That would have been very easy research. It would have been. <laughs> that would have been fun said, oh, I'm working. It would have been actually a really exciting thing to have done. Um, okay, well, should we go so, to the second one? Yeah, number two. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at All number right. two. Yeah, you, you give this one a go. The static is just as bad, if not worse. You can barely make out the words. Uh, you catch an in, and then after some more static, you hear the word darkness, but then it's all drowned out. So... A bit, a bit annoyed. Uh, you move on to the third set, and it's just getting worse every time. You catch the word hold several seconds into the song, and nothing before or after it. And then the fourth pair, worst yet. You have to wait ages, and all you finally get is the word B before the whole thing dies. This is what you get for trying to enjoy some three doors down. So is is there is there a light is there a light switch that we can turn on or off in this room uh let's go with no no fine i was just <laughs> thinking there might that be makes a way no logical sense that there wouldn't be but let's go with no mm. i have the power uh corporate Great. makes him keep the lights on all the time mm. nice. can we shut can we shut our eyes <laughs> please sure you enter oh. another world <laughs> yeah we're in another a world of darkness behind your eyes so we should ho we should hold the letter B down on the computer game, maybe, when it says hold B. Ah, mm. let's go, let's go. Oh, oh, also in the com so in the computer game, yeah, there is like a there's a dark thing, isn't there? Darkness. Oh, was darkness mentioned. on the a lift. Deep, deep dark cave. There was a deep dark. There cave. was a yeah. deep dark cave. So it's whether oh, we go Lord. into the deep dark cave and hold B. Okay. <sighs> All right, <laughs> you tumble back over to the demo TV. <laughs> You, rather than starting the level the normal way, you walk your character over to Deep Dark Cave, and instead of searching it and killing the enemies like you normally would, you stand perfectly still and hold the B button. Enemies crawl out of the cave, coming closer and closer, but you resist the urge to stomp on their heads or burrow underneath them. And just as the first wave is about to hit you, your character disappears in a puff of smoke. The jungle vanishes, and the words BONUS WORLD flash on the screen. Oh, no. Suddenly, your character is standing in the very center of the screen. A tiger's coming at you from the right, so you jump straight up in the air. And then while still in the air, you move off to the right, so you land behind it. It trots off the left side of the screen, so you stand still for a moment, enjoying your safety. But oh no, vultures are dive bombing you. You quickly burrow under the ground to avoid them. They're flying around the whole screen, but they can't reach you. You're tucked down in the bottom right corner. And at last they give up and fly away, and a new message pops up on screen. Bonus world complete, new high score! And hey, you get to type your initials in for getting a top score. Take that, previous winner, DJI, whoever you are. Uh, so oh. DJI is the drones, right? Drones, yeah. So we get to put in three letters, don't we? Yeah, I mean, you've got to put in poo, right? <laughs> <laughs> got to try it. Feels like it. Um... <laughs> right, okay. So mm. let's just type in poo then. Yeah, yeah poo. That, only fair. All right, poo <laughs> has been immortalized. So DJI feels important. Is that what we think? Yes, DJI because that's also the drone. Oh, oh! So hang on. Was there something to do with the like where the right, uh, like maybe the directions with the that the Danny was saying about bottom right uh, mm. of the of the mm. screen? So the tiger came out from. Oh no! Were you in the middle and then the tiger jumps out? So you jump to the right to the left. Like so you're. Could you repeat yeah, you what jump. we do on the on yeah. the com on the computer game, please? Yeah, absolutely. You had it pretty right. You were standing in the very middle of the screen. Tiger came at you from the right, so you jumped straight up. And then, while still in the air, you moved over to the right, so you landed behind the tiger. And you just stood there for a minute, enjoying your victory. And then vultures started dive bombing you, so you burrowed under the ground. So, so that is it. That sort of thing. I mean, yes, Alex has shown us a successful yes. solution. Great. That's that. correct. Yeah, that's sort of with the arrow, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's what I've got as well, Great, just in too. case anyone... Well, yeah, me too, me too. I think yeah, I, I got it, I got it, I got yeah. it as well, so... Yeah. Well, I, I, I got it as well, I just didn't <laughs> yeah. have to hold it up. Well, I kind I of, you know, like... Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. 
I just heard <laughs> I just heard Bill saying Alex Alex has showed us the Oh, but yeah. like I kind of led you there a bit. I I've got to say like I I kind of helped you. <laughs> I mean, you the only reason we we're in the cave was me, but Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, but kind of three doors down, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to affect. I don't want to, you know. I give a all right, guys. It's almost as if it's a team. All right, it's a team. Everyone's great, and everyone's okay, contrib- contributed equally. Oh, what sorry, Ed. Drug? Did I not tell you I'm grading you each separately? Yeah. Because I've oh, got separate. Oh right. Um, I've got separate scores goodness? for all of you. Then let's remember that I remember the cave. <laughs> <laughs> only, only <laughs> one of you. Only one of you can take home the Richard Osman branded fondue set. So. <laughs> I will. Okay, so what's up, what's up with that drone, man? All right, uh, so the drone is sitting there waiting for you to slide in your password. Alex, can you do the honors of the drone? I'm but scared of drone technology, so I yeah, think I'm also be... I'm also scared. Can uh, I let um, Darkness Boy do it? Okay, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> happy to. I got the code, so I will be inputting the code. <laughs> <laughs> You swipe your finger around the password pad. You start in the middle, and you make that little whoop loop, and it unlocks. Fantastic. Okay, now you got to learn how a drone works. Um, it seems easy enough. Uh, you toggle the camera settings and you get a little alert that its memory is almost full and you need to free up some space on the memory card. Uh, you can't look at anything on the memory card on the drone, but the memory card comes out easily enough and it can go into anything. Do we have... On the computer accessories table, do we have uh, accessories that we can view what's on the memory card? Absolutely. So let's go do that. Mm -hmm. Plug a bunch of stuff in. You get this going. Uh, One quick loading screen later and, oh boy, that is a lot of video files. They must have had this thing just recording every day, all day. There are hundreds of files. They're organized by day, split into half-hour segments. You certainly can't watch it all. Well, we know where we're going there, don't we? Thursday, 7 p.m. Yes, please. You scroll through the list of dates and times and hit Thursday, 7 p.m. The footage is nice and clear. The drone is just sitting on its table, facing the cash register. And who's working that night but your dear young friend, Colin? It's a quiet evening, not many shoppers. But less than a minute in, a customer approaches the register and your breath catches in your throat a little bit. (gasps) It's Blake, your fiancé Blake, having a good old friendly chat with Colin, handing over a credit card to be scanned, being handed a small bag. You weren't told about this at all. Last Thursday... As far as you knew, Blake was just grocery shopping. You strain your eyes to see any details on the device that Collins used to scan Blake's credit card, but it's way too small. But then, after Blake leaves, Colin does something. He takes a lime green USB out of his pocket, attaches it to his device, and seems like he's downloading something onto it. You fast forward to see what he does with it, and of course, at the end of his shift, he just tosses it into the display of USBs for sale. Where, where is that display? It's also on the computer accessories Can we, table, well, right let's beside have a you. Well, hunt through uh, uh, there for the lime green business mm-hmm. then, I guess. Yeah, you uh, fish the lime green one right from the bottom and you plug it into the computer, I suppose, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, please. please. No, actually, yes. I, I don't think we should do it, guys. <laughs> Sniff I it, lick it, plug so. it in. Yeah. <laughs> lick it. <laughs> <laughs> Sure enough, uh, it hasn't been wiped. It is full of documents, receipts, invoices. You wipe it after licking it. Well, uh, <laughs> you scroll down through dates, times, names, and you uh, find one that matches the details of when Blake was here. Funny, it doesn't look like any money actually changed hands. Blake bought something, but was not charged. The product was an added feature for your TV, something called a triple power channel. You have no idea what that is. Is that something that we can go and look at on the on the TVs that uh, are in the shop? At this, mm-hmm. in investigate what a triple power channel is. That's a good question because if you remember when you press the button on the TV before, it just turned on but said no input. Hmm. If we press the power button three times, does anything happen? You quickly press the power button three times, and the TV's input changes. Mm-hmm. It <gasps> swaps channel. <gasps> and you, well, you let out a gasp very much like that. Uh, What's in as, the script? <gasps> well, the image blares to life. You can see yourself. It's a very high-angled shot of you right here in the electronics store. You're moving, heading towards the TVs, and then you're pressing the power button. There must be a few seconds delay, but you are being watched by more cameras than just those by the cash register. 
And if you turn on another TV, you see more of the same. Slightly different angle this time. It's triple power channel. It's a store surveillance thing, clearly, but then why would Blake have it? As you watch yourself on these screens, you happen to spot something else. One of the cameras that looks down from the ceiling catches a little bit of the area around the doors in its field of view, including one of the sales posters. You can't see much, but there's something shiny on the poster like ink. But when you turn around to look in the real world, you with your human eyes cannot see anything except for your regular poster human message. Eyes. But if you look back to the screen, there's definitely something there. Okay, so do we need to get the drone up and have a look at it from mm. from above? Well, it'd just be good to get the drone up anyway, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's fun. cool. Everything looks cool from up high up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> You grab a controller to one of the drones, you connect it all up, and uh, you you send the thing flying to the ceiling. It's perfectly soundless. You are you're you haven't done much drone piloting before, but you are quite good at it. Uh, you send it back and forth above the doors area a few times. You record the posters from a high angle, and then you bring it in for a slightly wobbly landing. Take out the memory card, check your new footage. And as you suspected, it's shiny not quite invisible ink, all over the posters. Oh. So you pause the footage and take a look at it. Oh my God. And there is an image that you can uh, see for that. Yeah. There we uh, go. Would Finally. Mr. Edward Gamble like to read what or describe the image for our viewers at home? I would. So uh, this is on the sales posters. On the Sky brand poster, there is uh, the letters W and M with a water droplet. Then on the car poster, there's F and the lightning bolt symbol. And then waterproofing, there's D and the recycling symbol. Uh, and then on the pet sounds poster, uh, A equals 70, B equals 50, C equals 100. Oh. Okay. So this is obviously where the white, the white goods business come in, comes into play. Washing machine, fridge, and dishwasher. On the washing machine, the droplet is B. B plus um okay. and b equals 50 so 50 plus 50 plus and then fridge, fridge. uh fridge lightning bolt is c, c plus so 100, 100 plus. plus oh you're clever and then, <laughs> and then d uh d c. is dishwashers obviously uh and it's the recycling symbol so it's c, c uh which is another uh 100 is... so that makes 250 yeah all right, 250, uh, do we want to go to the cash register? Just as one little point, do you remember on those stickers, it said that they were the SIC ratings? You go to the cash register, you put in 250. After you press the zero, you hear a funny click come from somewhere in the machine. It doesn't do anything, but something has definitely been triggered. Press the button, press the button! Oh, it's special <laughs> item codes, SIC, got it. Oh my god. Special <laughs> item code, yeah. Jeez Louise, I'm slow. Okay, okay, who wants to press the button? <laughs> I'm too scared. Ed, do it. It's your it's I've pressed it already. <laughs> I pressed it ages ago. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you reach down, you press that button with your hand, with your tongue, with whatever you please. This time something happens. The lights turn out. The TVs switch off. The security cameras stop whirring. You are plunged into darkness and everything but you has frozen. Except from over in one corner of the room, you hear a creaking noise. It's coming from the CD and DVD area. You carefully make your way over there and what you see baffles you. The DVD rack, that ancient clunky rattling DVD rack, is swinging away from the wall, revealing a large gap. Yeah. Secret passage. You flick your head towards the doors. Colin, nowhere in sight. And with the power off, for the first time in quite a while, you feel properly alone and unwatched. So you step into the passage. It isn't very long, but it does have some twists and turns. And when you reach the end, you find yourself at a door. Administration office, it says. Strictly authorized access only. Oh well, you open at a crack. And when you see no one inside, you go all the way in. Everyone who works here must have gone home for the evening. First thing you realize is this is not an office. Sure, there's a table and chair and a mountain of paperwork, but there are also cameras. Pinhole spy cameras, piles of them. 
And not only that, every square inch of wall in here is covered in a plasma screen. All of them switched off, but on a hunch, you pick one and press the power button three times. Screen comes to life, and just like the ones in the store, it shows a moving picture of you. Only not you in the present. No, this is old. Years old. It's you at the university group meeting where you first met Blake. Yeah, and then the next shot is the two of you talking, your first ever conversation. The camera zooms in on your faces and the lighting shifts warmer. Then there's another cut. It's another location, another time. This one's showing your first date. And another, the day you got engaged, there's swelling music and that fuzzy camera effect that makes everything look super romantic. And you know it felt romantic at the time, but right now, you don't feel that at all. You feel sick. You tear your eyes away and look down at the paperwork on the desk. It's not office memos or boring reports, it's flyers. Flyers with your picture and Blake's picture and the big words, don't miss the wedding episode. The wedding episode. Your head is spinning. Somehow you manage to scramble out of the office and back into the electronics store. You slam the secret doorway shut, and when Colin finally returns, you somehow keep it together as you apologize for accidentally shutting off the power and insist you didn't leave the cash register. Okay. Uh, that's, o that's okay then. But uh, my bosses say I should really close now and that you should go home. It's unusual to be out at this time. It is unusual for you to be out at this time. But this Colin kid should not know that. You numbly make your way to your car. What is your plan now? You don't know. You don't have a clue how to make a plan for something like this. You get into the driver's seat and you just sit. And you see a piece of paper poking out of your glove box. You pull it out. On it, there's a picture of a triangle. And underneath that are words written in an unfamiliar hand. I can help you. <laughs>